Hello, my name is Pablo Requena and welcome to this series of videos that we're doing about French polishing. So we are now going to be looking at what um, type of polish and what shellac I'm using and what are the ingredients. So without going really too much into depth in this subject because you'll find that there is so much information out there, I just want to describe the stuff that I'm going to be using for this guitar. So the first thing is the shellac that we're going to use which when you buy it should look a bit like this and basically this is blonde de-waxed shellac and it comes in flakes. So to me this is the best um, ingredients to use because sometimes you can buy shellac that it's already been mixed and it's ready to go which in my experience it's, very, it's best to stay away from, from those products because I found that you don't know how long they've been mixed and they don't have a, a limited shelf life. So there's a good chance that if you use that type of shellac you will have problems when it comes to the drying process of the, of the shellac and sometimes it doesn't even really dry thoroughly and it always remains a little sticky and in the end you end up just removing it and having to do it again. So if that has happened to you before the chances are that it's because you used shellac that it was already mixed. So the best way to know that that's not going to happen is to mix it yourself. So what I use is Blonde wax shellac. There are also other types out there. You can find shellac with some color on it and also with wax and so on. But the best that you can use for this for these jobs is uh, is this one. So that's the shellac. Then the other thing that you're going to need is alcohol or methylated spirits. I prefer to use alcohol and you have to make sure that it's at least 96 percent. This one actually comes from a um, supplier for polishes so it's actually not this make at all it's a different one but the important thing is that it needs to be 96 percent because uh, if not what will happen is that there will be too much water in your alcohol and again you will find that that will give you some uh, blooming into the polish and it's not really going to work very well. So always buy your alcohol from a good source. Make sure that you don't go into a cheap uh, source that you don't know really what they're going to sell you. So it really is worth to do a little bit of um, research there. Then the other thing that we're going to be using is oil. And what you have here is a very refined, transparent engineering oil. And I like using this because it doesn't go off. Uh, in fact, you know, I've bought this oil years ago and it's still, it's still good. You could use other oils. Uh, many people tell me that they like to use olive oil and maybe walnut oil, some natural oils, which is lovely. It's great to work with natural products. Um, the only downside, downside with that is that, especially if it's cooking oil, like olive oil, like virgin oil, you know, good, good quality virgin oil, but nevertheless natural, what will happen is that eventually it will go rancid and it, you'll have to change it. And it's not going to be an issue for polishing because um, all the oil that we are going to use on the guitar, we are going to end up removing it. So it's not like your guitar is going to end up smelling funny, but nevertheless, the oil that you use, you'll have to replace it and change it. So again, that's not a big deal, but this type of engineering oil is my preference. Um, so now we can look at how to how to mix it and the the proportion of how you mix how how you mix the the shellac and the alcohol is quite important because you don't want to make a, a, a solution that it's too thick and too heavy on shellac, but you also don't want it to be too thin. Um, in case of doubt, it's always better if it's a little bit thinner because it's much better to be applying thinner coats more often than applying thicker coats less often. So in case of doubt, you always want to have a little bit less shellac and more alcohol. What's commonly understood as a good combination is to use a two pound cut. And basically what that is, is that you would have two pounds of shellac to mix with a gallon of alcohol.
But of course, that's too much to mix. You don't want to mix a gallon of, alco of alcohol with shellac because it'll give you too much and, and eventually it will go off before you're going to use it completely. So what I normally use, uh, for me, it works to mix half a litre at a time. And you just work out how many grams uh, you need to mix with half a litre, you know, knowing that two pounds of shellac will be mixed with a gallon. Then you can scale down. And once you have to mix, basically you put it together and you have to wait until the shellac dissolves thoroughly all the way. This usually takes two or three days. And if you grind the shellac before you mix it, which you can do with a coffee grinding machine, for example, that's what I use, then the shellac will be a lot thinner and it will dissolve quicker. But you still have to, whoops, you still have to you know, make sure that it's thoroughly uh, mixed. And then once you look at your mix, you want to make sure that there is no um, impurities um, suspended in it. This one is, is nice and clean. And most of the time it's okay, but if you found that there is some impurities in there, what you will need to do is to filter it into a different container. And to filter it, you could use a bit of cotton or a, a coffee filter. Um, you know, they will work very well as well. And just filter it through into a different container to make sure that everything is completely clean. So now that we've got the, the basic ingredients that we're going to use, we're also going to look at the pomace powder. Pomace powder is it's a very fine dust that comes from grinding the pomace uh, stones. And this comes in different grades. So this is like, um, I think I've got four zeros here so it really is the finest that you can get and what I do you can see this is um, very pale very white dust and what I do is to make a pouch of it so this is just a bit of um, cotton and you make it into a little pocket and put some of the powder in there and then I just wrapped it with a bit of masking tape and this is great because the dust will come through you can see it will come through the, um, through the cloth and it's a very good way of applying it. I always keep it in a pot because I don't want it to be picking, um, picking up dust from the bench or anything. I've cleaned the bench as much as I can, but you, know, you want to make sure. So this is basically what we're going to be using. And now really without further ado, what we're going to do is that we're going to start looking about how to uh, apply it into the guitar. So I'm going to bring onto the bench the guitar that we've been working on and then I can show you um, what we've got here. So what I've done off camera is that I've been working on the guitar more to get it just to the point where we can start polishing and you can see here that now all the epoxy resin that we had in the back and the sides is now removed. Everything is looking really good and I've done it to the point in which I know that I have cut all the resin that it was sitting on the surfaces. So hopefully I've only left the resin that it's in the grain. Basically now the, the, what it means is that the grain is filled with the, with the epoxy resin. And looking at it on the light, this won't show on the video very well really, but you can put the, the guitar into the light and then you can see that all the pores are completely full and I've got the feeling that this is pretty good you know you don't know until you start polishing it you've got any any um, any pores open left behind but this I'm very happy with this it looks great and I've done the same in the sides everything looks really good very clean and then you can also see my soundboard is completely clean and I also have masking tape in the area where the bridge will be uh, glued on later on and this is my first choice for polishing a guitar to polish it without the bridge on because that's the best way to know that you're going to have polish really close into the bridge all the way around because that's one of the areas where it's really a little hard to do properly and it's one of the places where you will look first to kind of look at the standard and the quality of the polishing that somebody's done on your instrument so if you polish with the bridge 
I will give you a few tips about how to do that, but here you're going to see how to do it without the bridge on and it's just so much easier. The reason why I put the tape on is because I really would like to avoid to have any kind of finish on the wood, which is, for me, it's important to keep it completely fresh so that the glue will penetrate really well later on when it comes to glue the bridge on. Also, I have tape on the fingerboard and of course we're not going to put any polish on the fingerboard but the reason why I do that is because um, if I don't have any tape in here the rubber uh, which is full of uh, shellac when I start working on these areas the, the polish will build up on the end of the frets and also it will run along the frets a bit and of course you can clean that but I'd rather put a little bit of tape and then I don't have that issue and I don't have something to do and you know again another job to do later on but what I will do is that when I'm more advanced into the polishing and I'm using less shellac with the with the rubber then I will remove it because then it means that only with a little bit of shellac left in the rubber it will be sufficient to polish the ebony because ebony is very dense and it doesn't need a huge amount of polish to to have a nice layer and to look really good but you don't want to have a big mess in in this area um, <clears throat> I also have the neck ready, basically the guitar is ready to go. So what I've done is that I have made sure that I have been using all the grades of sandpaper up to 400. And you want to do that because you want to make sure that you have a really um, scratch free, free surface. Because especially in the soundboard, mm -hmm. if you don't go up in the grades too much and you just leave it at maybe 240, then the, um, the surface is going to be a little bit too porous and it's going to soak in quite a bit of polish before you can start building it up. So it's always a good idea to spend a bit of time, prepare your guitar really well and then uh, the more you prepare before then the easier it's going to be to, to polish uh, the instrument. So now that we have the guitar ready, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start polishing the uh, lighter areas, so the soundboard and the neck, and then we're going to look at the rosewood. And the reason for that is because I want to give some protection to the areas that are more delicate and also lighter in color because I don't want to get any red from the rosewood into anything that is light in color. Uh, but also because the first part of the process with French polishing is to seal the grain, and we'll be doing that with shellac with a mix that we've done already. But it's important to do that because when you start polishing, you want to make sure that you don't have any areas where the oil could get into the wood. Because if you did that and you use, use the oil, uh, which is, you know, is a really key element of polishing, but you want to do it not too early because if you get oil into the wood, then it will look patchy and it won't come out. So you'll have to remove all your polish and cut back a little bit until you get everything clean again. So make sure that you use the oil at the right time, not too quickly, not too early. So let's do the sound blow first. And what I've done is that I've got in this spot, I've got a little bit of polish, which is from the same mix that I just done. And I want to dilute it a little bit. So instead of being a two pound cut, I want to make it into a one pound. So to do that, all I need to do really is to add on more or less the same amount of uh, alcohol as, um, you know, the same volume that I've got here already. I just need to add more or less the same amount to double the amount of alcohol that we've got here. So I don't need to be too accurate. I'm just gonna do it by eye. And basically, you know, if I've got like a bit more than the thinness of my finger here. I can just go there like that. That's maybe two fingers. And yeah, I'm happy with that. So, you know, you don't have to be, if you want to be really accurate and measure it and all of that, then that's great. Uh, but, you know, it's not really so crucial. So I'm just going to put this pot and give it a little mix to make sure that everything goes well together. And now I have over here a little container which has had a little bit of uh, shellac in there. It still has a little bit, but it's basically clean. And I'm going to pour some of this into 
into there, something like that. And sometimes I've done this with a brush and I just brushed it on carefully. But on the soundboard, I'll do that on the neck, but on the soundboard I think I prefer to do it with, with, um, with a cloth because I would like to have um, a clean surface without any um, brush marks and lines and so on, which I'm only going to have to remove later. So I'm just going to soak my cloth into here and I'm going to be methodical. I don't want to overdo it, but I want to make sure that I am covering the whole surface. I'm being very careful here. It's going over the rosewood and I'm going to check that I haven't got any red here, which it looks like I might have a little bit. So what I'm going to do is that before I carry on with this, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of shellac right on the edge, like this. I'm using my finger as a guide here, there like that. And now I'm going to do a little bit in here as well, like this. There you are. And as you can see on my cloth, I've got quite a lot of red here. And this is because the alcohol in the shellac in the in the mix is picking up the pigments from the rosewood. And you really want to make sure that you don't get those um, anywhere. So by sealing that edge first, what it means is that you know that's gonna dry really fairly quickly. Now I can just go into a different part of the cloth to make sure that it's clean. And I'm going to sort of avoid the edges for now to make sure that they're completely clean. So I can do a different area here. And um, there's no rush, but you know you want to make sure that you work quickly enough so that you have um, a good application here you don't want to have lines that dry on you um, on your soundboard so I'm going to change the cloth again and I'm going to put a little bit more my fingers are getting a little sticky but I really don't mind um, I can wash my hands well with a bit of alcohol later but I see many people using latex gloves, which it might be a good idea, but I've never got on very well with them, so you're not going to see me using them. So now I'm happy to go over the edge, and I'm being careful to make sure that I'm not getting any of the rosewood into the soundboard. This is also a really exciting time because this is when the grain is starting to really come up and you can really see the beautiful colors of the wood. So a bit more polish. Like that. And over here. So over there I'm going to have to change the position of the guitar to be able to really access that area there. So I'm just going to bring it over this way. There we are. So this looks pretty good to me. I have a nice coat of uh, shellac here that it's sealing everything. It looks a little bit patchy in areas, but it's because there's still a little bit of areas where the shellac is still a little wet. But as soon as it's completely dry, everything is going to look really even and really good. Um, I think over this edge, I'm just going to do a little more there like that and up here that's it 
Right, so the, sh uh, the soundboard is now sealed and it's ready to start going on with the rubber, but I'm going to wait until that's completely dry. And now I'm going to do the back of the neck. And that I'm going to do it with the brush because here if I have any little build-ups from the, um, from the uh, brush uh, hairs they will be very easy to, to cut back and I'm just going to put that back in there and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove um, some of the polish I don't want to have a huge amount here so that this runs everywhere and once the brush is less heavy on polish I'm just going to go into areas where I don't want to have the polish running everywhere and you will see me later on in this process how I feel the grain in the neck because the grain is quite open here on the cedar and I will be feeling it but like I said before, um, instead of using grain filler, what I'm going to do is, is to do the more sort of traditional way of filling the grain, which is using pomice powder. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to fill the grain with the powder itself, but what I'm going to do is that the powder is going to help me to remove um, polish from some areas and forcing it in into the grain in other areas. And um, it means that it, everything will be exactly the same color and it will look beautiful and it's important to fill the grain on the neck as well because this is a important part of the guitar for the player because it needs to feel really comfortable and smooth and if the grain is not completely filled it's actually sort of a bit noticeable when when you play in the guitar and if you fill the grain then what will happen is that as this is polished it will look well, like the rest of the guitar, it will look like it's encased in, in glass in, and it will look beautiful. So over here also I'm going to bring, the, um, let me see if I can get a good light in there. I'm going to bring the polish right to the edge of the rosewood, but I try to avoid the rosewood because I don't want to pick up any of the pigments into the cedar. Be there. That's it. And in doing this, what will happen is that the grain now is not going to take any any um, dirt or pigments from from the rosewood. Again, this might look a little brochy, but once it dries, it will look great, and it's a great way of preparing these surfaces here for when it comes to apply the the French polish. Great, okay. Maybe a little bit up there. I don't want to put too much. I just want to put enough to seal everything, but I don't want to, the idea is not to banish the guitar with this. This is not uh, the purpose of using the brush or, or applying this in this way. Um, I had already done off camera the head and, and the back of the head and so on so I don't need to do that. So now the soundboard has been drying while I've been doing the neck and the neck you know it's not quite dry enough yet but it'll be in a few in a few moments. So now I'm going to turn my attention to preparing the surfaces on, on the rosewood and the first thing to do is like we saw before we saw that when I ran the cloth on the edge there was quite a lot of uh, red into the cloth from the rosewood so the first thing that we're going to do is with the same cloth that I've got polished in it I'm going to seal the white lines first and I'm doing this very carefully to make sure that I don't bring red into the white look at that so if you run it really straight then you know that you're not going to bring this into the white lines so now all i need to do is to change into a different place and do that and then 
I'm going to do the edges, but I'm going to do both edges at the same time. So it's like if I'm going to wrap it around the corner and then I'm putting a little bit of pressure, but I'm also being very careful to make sure that the cloth is not kind of going sideways, it's only going along the length. And now I need to change into a different part of the cloth. And if you do this, what you'll find is that when it comes to polish the main part of the rosewood, again, I need to find a different part here, the white lines are going to stay clean, which is what you want. And now I'm going to do the front, but I've got the feeling I'm going to have to fold this up differently. Maybe like this. And now let's do this one. So now I have a little bit of protection over the edges, but it's not quite enough. If I go into it with polishing, then it's going to dissolve that very quickly and it's going to make everything very blotchy and pink, which is not very nice. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to apply a little bit more shellac in the front. Again, very lightly, I don't want to do anything too heavy and I'm going to use a fresh piece of cloth. By the way, what I'm using here, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's cotton and you know, you can use linen, you know, different people use different things. I like using cotton, but what you want is to use, this is from an old shirt. You want to have good quality material, but you want it to be old and so this was an old shirt that started to be a bit too worn out to be able to wear it. But it's great for this because it means that it doesn't have lots of fibers that will come out into the surfaces. So if you're using cotton that it's sort of new, then it would be a good idea to wash it um, a few times before you start using it. But for me, this one, this is a shirt or was a shirt that I bought a few years ago and I know it's been in the washing enough times. So I'm now going to apply a little bit more because I can see that there are areas where uh, there's not much polish in the soundboard. So I'm just going to apply a little bit more. Um, but actually I'm aware that this video is now getting a bit long so really what I'll do is that I'll do that off camera but basically um, you just need to do it exactly in the same way that I've just done and it will just have a little bit more protection into the whole surface here of the soundboard and then this is already dry enough to do it again so I'm just going to do the back here so that then I can show you what I do um, in the rest in the rest of this. So I'm going to go back to this cloth that has a little bit of shellac in it and I'm just going to do one more run of shellac into here. And you can see that now there's no, nothing coming out. So let, let's test it on this. If I just do the center line again Look, there's a tiny bit of pink coming out there. So that's a really good sign that this is already sort of protected. So what I wanted to show you, and then we'll leave it at that, is that I will be applying, again, a very thin layer of shellac on the back and sides. So that way, the whole instrument, we have one thin layer of shellac sealing all the wood. So now what I'm going to do is that I don't want to go over these areas too much because this will dissolve the shellac that I put in here and I, it could bleed into 
the white lines. So all I need to do is to just do it carefully and go around the edges near enough but knowing that you're not going to get into um, into the white lines and you want to work quickly enough so that you have always a, a wet edge um, everywhere you don't want to have thick lines drying up over here but again at this early stages of the of the polishing it won't be a big deal look at all the color that it's getting is coming out here so i think i don't want to get all that shellac dirty so i'm going to put just a little bit on this and if I get color on that, which I will get from having a dirty brush, I'm not gonna get all of that shellac dirty. And again, you can see the beauty of the wood coming up now. And you don't want to have a very thick coat of shellac brushed on in here but because we have diluted this with quite a lot of alcohol we know that what's going to happen here is that the alcohol will evaporate and it will leave behind a very thin amount of shellac which is what we want we don't want to have a thick amount of shellac in here to to make this too thick Right, I think I haven't got any thick brush lines, which is great. So there you are, you've got the initial coat in there, which is to seal all that surface with the rosewood. And now we're going to do the sides, but I'm not going to do the whole thing again. I don't want to go on and show things that are really a bit too obvious. But all I want to do is to do a bit up here. Mm -hmm so that you can see that actually you know my brush is a little loaded so I'm just gonna come on to here and then when there's less product on the brush then I can come up to the edge of the hill and make sure that I get near the white lines without going over them again they already have been protected but this way you know that everything is going to stay really nice and white and so on so I'll carry on and then when it comes over here I'll just come to that end I don't want to go over the white lines there so this is as much as I'm going to be showing you now and um, you know once I've done this I will be cleaning my brush and using a bit of alcohol to clean it all up to make sure that is everything nice and clean but uh, basically you can see this is quite a simple process you just need to be meticulous and careful about how you do it and even though you know things look a little blotchy here and there but that's really not a problem at all because when we start building up the layers of the of the uh, shellac here on the polish that will disappear and it will everything will look really fantastic one thing I'm really pleased to say is that as I'm putting a little bit of shellac I can see that the grain is completely full which I'm very happy about it because it means that the grain filling process was very successful. So um, what I'm going to do off camera is that I'm going to finish off all the brushing of the shellac that I need to do. I'm going to put a little bit of more uh, shellac on the soundboard as well. Maybe I'll dilute it even a little bit more to make sure that everything is really thin. And then in the next video, we'll see how we get on with polishing and go straight into it. So until the next one, thank you for watching.